Um, that was amazing, Ani. Um, the chat is glowing up. Love it. Keep it going. Um, without further ado, let's just keep it rolling, y'all. Um, let's turn it over to our um, comrades at Howard Brown Health Center. We're going to start off with Shakia Flowers, who's going to give you a bit of an overview of what Howard Brown is and what what their organizing has been in, and then you know, dig right in. So Shakia, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so excited to be here um, and sharing this space with you all. Just wanna thank Labor Notes for the invitation um, to have us back. We were there in the summer, which it was an amazing experience then, and I'm looking forward to um, um, continuing that experience and sharing our, you know, what we've been working on as a union. Um, our union is called Howard Brown Health Workers United. I want to start off by reading the mission statement because this is always a joke. It's always hilarious to me. Um, the mission statement for Howard Brown. And it reads, Rooted in LGBTQ liberation, Howard Brown Health provides affirming health care and mobilizes for social justice. We are agents of change for individual well-being and community empowerment. Now, as I begin to share with you what we've experienced at Howard Brown, I want you to keep in mind what that mission statement is. And you tell me, you be the judge and tell me if Howard Brown's executive leadership at Howard Brown has um, come through, ha have been um, true to what their mission statement is. So um, back in, I want to say around like December of 2021, um, some of my wonderful co-workers decided, hey, let's, what do you guys think about a union? Um, and so there were some people that got in touch with our, our nurses are already unionized at Howard Brown. And so they got in touch with um, the union reps for the, the nurses union and um, from there, it just kind of took off. We organized, and I'm going to kind of fast forward this. Um, it, we organized really fast in over eight months, in just eight months, I should say. Um, we were electing our union overwhelmingly. So 97% of the workers who voted um, in the election, the, the union campaign voted to elect a union. Um, from that point on, and I'll tell you why we unionized. Um, People were, workers were overworked, um, underpaid, executive leadership was not tending to the needs of the workers and also ignoring the needs of our, the, the patients that we serve, our patient population. And we needed, we wanted to be a voice. We wanted to be a voice for ourselves and for the community that we serve. And so that's where a lot of this came forward. And what people were experiencing is, is that they spoke up or spoke out they were being retaliated against. They were started to be targeted by the management. They started being targeted by leadership and fired for frivolous reasons. Um, and so what happened was, you know, people decided let's let's unionize. Over the course of, I also want to point out over the course of, let me just take a look at my notes here. Um, over the course of the pandemic, um, our leadership who already made six figure sal salaries, who received funding from city, from the city government, from the state government and the federal government, they decided to go ahead and give themselves 33% raises while denying hazard pay to frontline workers during the pandemic. That is absolutely diabolical. <laughs> like the word just does not come to mind to me. With the rate of how the of transmission during COVID COVID and so many unknowns. This is what leadership at Howard Brown decided to do. Um, uh, and so after that, um, after we decided we elected our union, we went into the union, um, our first union meeting that we had, our first bargaining meeting that we had, um, they decided to go ahead and introduce an, uh, this idea of voluntary separation. Basically said Howard Brown was in a crisis, and this crisis was a making of their own doing by the lack of, or by their poor management. Um, that there was this crisis, this financial crisis, and they needed to cut, they initially wanted to cut 115 members. And they wanted to do this before Thanksgiving. And so they offered a voluntary separation program um, and it only offered like two weeks severance. And this is just before the holidays of 2022. 
right? And so uh, fortunately, we were able to get a lot of support from our city, from city government, the city council, and we were able to get um, a leadership to push the layoffs back. And so fast forward, there's just a, a lot of stuff and, and I'm kind of jumping around because there's just a lot of stuff that happened really quickly in the course of like a few weeks here. And we're talking about the, the union busting was was ridiculous. Also during our union campaign, one of our coworkers was fired for her union. Fortunately for her, she was, because we have a union, she won her job back and she'll be starting very soon if she hasn't started already. So we're really excited, two of them actually, two workers are gonna be getting their jobs back who were um, illegally um, fired um, because of their union support. So fast forward, um, a lot of union busting happened, just not giving, not bargaining in good faith. Um, I think we have a total of like maybe 22 UOPs currently um, that are being um, considered with the National Labor Board. And we are um, still in the union. Um, we are still bargaining at this time. I am one of the laid off workers. Um, so in January of 2023, the very beginning, um, our Union decided they all elected or voted to have a uh, unfair labor practice strike that happened at the beginning of um, of January of 2023. So ten the ten clinics closed down, including the three Brown Elephant locations as well. And our we had basically the union support was amazing. It was such a great feeling to be out there with my coworkers, um, fighting for the rights of our of my colleagues and for the community so that we could find finally um, have our voice heard and so that people could know what was happening at Howard Brown Health. And so um, my experience with the union is um, that I, I've met some wonderful people that I would not have otherwise met had we not unionized and realized how much, how like-minded I am, we are. I should say, with each other in terms of what we think about how workers should be treated in the work in the workplace. Toxic leadership has no place. Um, I think what the pandemic showed us was that um, that the labor force needed us. They need workers just as much as we need them, and so we should be approaching work now from a partnership standpoint. I don't know how many times in the past I've heard people say you should be grateful you have a job. No business owners should be grateful that they have workers. And that is the position that I'm taking right now. We are the people that drive this economy and we deserve rights and we deserve work, living wages um, with the rate of inflation there is right now. We deserve to be respected for the work that we do. And um, I think that now is the time, I, I'm like, I'm loving to see all of the unions that are popping up, all the unionization that's popping up across the country right now is so powerful. It's validating, it's affirming. And the fact that um, I'm a part of it and I'm working with such courageous people right alongside me, it's been amazing. So um, I know we have a short amount of time. There's so much I wanna say, but um, I think Andrea and Julian will definitely take, pick up where I left off. So. <laughs> And so I guess, um, I'm, am I passing over mm -hmm. to Andrea? Um, no, to Julian. Thanks so Julian, much. Julia. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Julian. So um, first off, I just want to say thank you to Shakia for giving that a review. Um, I'm going to kind of talk about like the process of unionizing and what that has meant to, you know, not just me, but a lot of the people that I've met through this union process. Um, I will start off by saying that I am not the same person that I was when I started um, unionizing some of my backgrounds. I worked for seven years in the film industry down in Atlanta, so I was a member of IATSE 479. Shout out to all the IATSE peeps in the chat. Uh, glad to see a number of you there. Um, and so I started at Howard Brown, oh my god, 14, only 14 months ago. <laughs> um, I you know, I had always really identified as a socialist. I had, you know, experienced the benefits of a union, 
Um, and I think the first union email saying, hey, we're unionizing went out uh, like a week and a half after I started there. Um, I wasn't even on the email list at that point, but I still found it and I found a way to sign up um, and sign my card um, right away. Um, and so I got involved in the process. I was called by one of the organizers to work as part of the organizing committee, um, you know, which kind of drums up votes, talks to people about unions. If you're not, you know, if you haven't ever been part of a unionizing process, you have to get people to sign cards. And then when you have enough cards, you can file for an election. Um, so doing a lot of this work, getting to know coworkers. Um, and I kind of started, I was like, you know, my job isn't bad. Like I'm gonna do this for other people. Um, and the more that I talked to other people across this organization, I was an event planner. So I was there throwing fundraisers. My job had seemed on the surface have very little to do with, you know, what people that were working in the clinics were going through. And then when I heard what was happening to them, the way they were being treated by management, I was noticing those things happening to me and my colleagues too. Um, and so, you know, I'm talking to, you know, to, to nurse practitioners whose jobs probably couldn't be more different than mine. And we're running into the same problems. And what that really highlighted is that this is like an issue that A, is affecting everybody and it's coming from the top down. You know, when, you, when you're seeing such diverse kinds of job titles experiencing the same things, those problems trickle down. Um, and so in talking to all of these people from different life experience, from different fields, living in all over different parts of the city. I mean, one of the things about Chicago is that, um, or about Howard Brown, is that we have we have clinics all the way on the north side in Rogers Park, all the way to the south side in Englewood. Um, I mean, you're talking about a really, really wide array of different Chicago neighborhoods, people with very different experiences in life. Um, and they were all coming together because this was these problems were affecting them. It didn't matter what their background was. It didn't matter what their job was. Everybody was seeing these problems and management was not taking it seriously. So it was really eye-opening to me talking to other people outside of my field that this was, these were not isolated incidents. I think that was kind of like the first inkling that there is something like seriously troubling here at Howard Brown. Um, and there was something that we needed to do about it. And so, on a personal note, like I had moved to Chicago in 2018, you know, the, the job I was at before, I was the only queer person there. So coming to Howard Brown was already like really an exciting opportunity for me to meet queer people. Um, I'm in my 30s. People tell you that it's hard to make friends in your 30s. Let me tell you, uh, unionize your workplace. <laughs> it's honestly one of the best ways to meet people. I have people that I consider family now um, through this process. And so, you know, the process already like radicalized me um, more so <laughs> than I already was. Um, and all three, me, Shakia and Andrea, we got elected to be on the bargaining committee and help write the contract. We were all really excited because we knew that there were all these issues that we had talked to all these people about. Um, and then for us to go into contract negotiations and immediately the focus is shifted to these layoffs was again, really eye-opening. Um, and, I, you know, I'm in my 30s, like I said, I was laid off in 2008 um, when the recession happened then. I was laid off in 2020 um, when COVID broke out. And then here I am at the start of this new recession on this like chopping block again. Um, and it really like lit a fire inside of me. Um, you know, I spent so many nights phone banking and talking to my coworkers who I had never talked to before. And, you know, I'm talking, I'm a gay man, like my life, you know, is pretty carefree in some ways, but I'm on the phone with single mothers who don't know how they're going to be able to pay for their kids' food or their health care. Um, Shakia, um, you know, I mean, Shakia is a single mother. She's raised two amazing kids. Howard Brown's taking away her income and their health care. I'm talking to trans people that have never had, like, um, the security of a job that working at Howard Brown can provide. And they're on the chopping block, and they don't know how they're going to find a job that provides these benefits for them. Um, I'm talking to people who have chronic health issues. They need their health care, and Howard Brown is going to take it away because of this financial crisis that, you know, 
they created through mismanagement. Um, these sorts of things, uh, it's really hard to, to have these conversations and for them to not change a person. Um, you know, I always like considered myself kind of cynical. I was like the kind of person that was like, I don't need to make friends at work. Um, but I, I really encourage people to do it because you have a lot more in common with the people that you work with than you think. Um, and I think that's really been a huge takeaway. Howard Brown is run by gay people. There are gay people in almost all of the top, queer people in almost all of the top positions at Howard Brown. And this, there's no solidarity that, you know, between the workers at the bottom and the workers at the top at Howard Brown. There is, it doesn't matter if we're all queer. It doesn't matter, you know, if there are people of color at the top because they're not making decisions that are good for people of color at the bottom. Gay people at the top are not making decisions that are good for gay people at the bottom. Um, and so I've always said that I would rather spend time with the, <laughs> the straight socialist than a gay capitalist. <laughs> so, you know, I met people, it did not matter their background, it didn't matter their experience. Um, what matters is that we were united in this way. And so when it came up to the strike, uh, this- Julian, I just wanted to say I've got like one minute left. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it, I'll wrap it up nicely. Uh, mm -hmm. So we go on strike, we have the entire community turning out for us. We have the benefit of being an organization that provides crucial life-saving services to the queer community. And the queer community loves their healthcare providers. They love what this organization can do with them. They were pissed off that the workers that were being treated. I mean, we had people from other unions coming out, people, patients were coming out, all kinds of people coming out. Um, and on the final day of the strike, a lot of us went out for drinks afterwards and we we're all talking. And one of the things that we all like realized was that we are not, we were not the same people. Like we all agreed that this has fundamentally changed each of us. We were talking, this is the sort of thing that on our deathbeds we're going to remember, you know? Um, I, these are people I will go to their, I will go to their weddings. I wanna be in these people's lives forever. I think that the power of organizing really is so profound because at the end of the day, it is about, is people power. Um, it requires you to like drop that cynicism and look at these people as like individuals and what their needs are and how you can work together to help them achieve that. Um, I don't know that I was that kind of person before and I am so happy to have gone through this process and be that kind of person now. Thank you, so, Julian, so, so start much. unionizing. Even if you're on the fence, yeah. just start doing it. I promise you the, the spirit <laughs> will, will enter you. It will, that was a great plug for you. Just start talking to people. Um, guaranteed friends, dance partners, people, yeah, anything you could want. Um, I want to just remind people before we turn it to, um, Andrea, that if you are writing in the chat, um, a lot of you, I think are not meaning to, but you're writing just to us, the hosts and panelists, because that's the default. We're happy to get your stuff, but it's, you know, I'd rather if it's meant for everyone just to, that you, um, click everyone so that, um, everyone can be involved. Okay. Now, without further ado, I will pass it to Andrea to bring us home. All right. Well, I am uh, I am tasked with the unenviable um, task of uh, following all of these incredible people. Um, first of all, thank you to everyone who has spoken so far. Um, you know, from Jerry and uh, Annabelle. Um, you know, I, I still like I, I value the history lesson I got um, back in June, and now here um so much um it's it's made me feel so inspired um and also um ani and my fellow howard brown health union workers um julian and shakia um it's it's incredible just hearing people from situations like ours talk um, you know, the people I was in the organizing committee with and the people I'm in the bargaining committee with now are all massive inspirations to me um, and, and people who I consider um, dear friends now. Um, and I, I thank you both for speaking and for saying so many amazing things. Um, so what I uh, what what I'll say is um, well, first of all, I'm Andrea. Uh, I use she her pronouns, um, and what I want to kind of bring up is I, I want to kind of tie us into history a little bit. You know, um, we are Howard Brown Health Workers United 
is a union that was started by, that was led by queer people and people of color. Um, I, I can count on probably one hand the number of straight cis white people that um, start that were that have been in this. Um, I can see you trying to count Julian. <laughs> um, we, I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm uh, getting caught up a little bit. Um, Claire and John, Julian. Um, I I feel like when I when I think about what we've done, um, the people who organized this union, the people who are still organizing this union, um, it, it is you know it feels like we are stepping. Um, I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of giants a little bit, both within the union itself and especially um, looking back through history. Um, you know, we as queer people at Howard Brown um, have the unique privilege of being, um, of not being alone, um, of not having to feel alone in some ways. Um, Howard Brown Health is the first place I've ever worked where I wasn't uh, the only trans person. Um, one of the only places I've ever worked where I wasn't the only queer person. Um, and that is an immense privilege that we have. And I think in unionizing, we have utilized that privilege in a way that I think is really important. I think um, now that I have taken part in unionizing uh, our workplace, um, I realize that I would have uh, lived the rest of my life in uh, unknown regret had I not left Howard Brown um, in that way. Um, you know, I think we spent a lot of this looking back at history, but I think one thing that's really beautiful is that we get to look into the future as well. Anyone who is unionizing their workplace is creating a future, is building the future um, for anyone that starts working there after them. Um, I'm not going to be at Howard Brown forever, but someone is going to be working at Howard Brown forever. Um, someone new every few years, maybe. But because of what we have done, their life will be a little easier. Their working conditions will be a little better. In the same way that as queer people, our lives are immensely better because of people like Jerry and people like Leslie Feinberg and everyone else who was mentioned today. Um, I'm terrible with remembering names, so uh, I, I wish I could just list all of them, but like our, our lives have been deeply affected by those people. And I think in unionizing our workplaces, we can deeply affect other people's lives in the same way. And I think that's something that's really important to uh, carry with you. Um, you know, one of the one of the things that I hope inspires people to uh, unionize their workplace if they're considering it is just you are creating history, maybe in a small way, maybe in a big way, but you are creating history and creating the future. Um, and as Julian said, unionizing is one of the best places to make friends. Um, I think one thing I really wanted to mention was being on. Being on the picket line um, in January, being on that picket line was one of the first times I looked around myself and said, wow, I am a part of a community. Um, I've always been a bit of a homebody. I've always been um, a little, uh, not shy, I'm very outgoing, but I'm very awkward. So I've always, I've always shied away from from um, large events and from um, you know a lot of uh, traditional queer spaces um, or what's considered a traditional queer space, um, and being on the picket line, I felt like that at all. You know, none of that mattered. I felt like I'd found I'd found the queer community that I needed. Um, I met people 
as I, as we've said um, so many times today, I met people that I care about deeply now um, on that picket line or just before um, or in the months preceding that. Um, the, the queer community is ingrained or, or labor is ingrained in the queer community, I think. And the queer community is ingrained in the labor movement. Um, those things should and do walk hand in hand, um, sometimes less than others. But, you know, there is no queer liberation without labor liberation. There is no liberation of queer people without liberation of working queer people. And, um, you know, I, I think that's uh, something that we're all very privileged to get to work towards. Um, I don't know, I think, that's, uh, I think that's about everything I have. I don't know how I'm doing on time, but I just, um, you know, I, I want everyone to know that if you are a queer person or even not a queer person, um, if you're a person of color, if you are anything and you are unionizing your workplace, you are doing something deeply important um, and something very meaningful and um, something that puts you on the right side of history and puts you um, in step with um, some of the most important people in history. Um, yeah, we, we, uh, something I, I said at some point is, um, you know, in, in solidarity, solidarity is, I don't remember what I said, <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but <laughs> in solidarity, where you're all connected to each other and through everyone in our history, um, in our effort to improve each other's lives and our own. Um, and, and that's something that's really powerful. <laughs> I think I'll stop before I repeat myself too many times. <laughs> okay, um, thanks so much, Andrea. Um, and thanks to everyone. I'm sitting here feeling really moved in a way that I was not um, prepared for um, or anticipating. Um, I forgot to say this earlier, <clears throat> just sort of how, how we see this panel like tied together. And I think, I hope it's been kind of obvious, but you know, we started with history, um, a little bit of a history lesson um, so that we could just get some grounding in what has come before and then bring it into um, the present and sort of hear, hear what's happening um, for folks now. Um, I wanna give a special shout out, which I was planning to do earlier, but now I see them in the Q&A to um, workers from Fenway Health um, in Boston, Fenway Workers United, um, who are organizing now with my beloved union, 1199. Um, really, really happy to see you here. Um, 